Hello everybody. Welcome into Rock Painting 101. Um, today I am going to be painting kind of a broken rock style design. Um, now I do have my paint pens here off to the side. However, if you follow along with our page here on Facebook, I just shared like a sneak peek picture of the video that's going to be on YouTube tomorrow. Um, you can see it today. This one I did with acrylics, but again, dry time. I'm using my pens. So if you don't have paint pens, you can easily recreate the design I'm doing today with your acrylic paint as well. But we're going to do kind of the same thing. Like we're going to have a rainbow breaking out of our rock um, today. So again, um, feel free to do this with acrylics. It might just take you a little bit longer, um, a little bit more dry time in between layers. But other than that, you can still pull off this fun rock idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is take um, my pen and give myself, actually, I think I'm going to use a pencil first, it give myself where I want my rock to be broken to expose this rainbow. So very lightly, and I'll hold it up higher so you can see this. Um, I'm just gonna kind of make almost like a broken chunk of rock. You can kind of come up and down. I'm not being super heavy with my pencil. It's just gonna give me a place to kind of eyeball while I'm filling in. So I know you can't see that very well, but you'll see it as I fill in my colors. And then I'm just gonna start with my rainbow. Now I am going to gauge left to right so this is all the way to the right here. I'm going over the edge. This is all the way to the left. So your center line to one side will be yellow and to the other side will be green. So it might be easier to start there. I'm actually gonna start with my yellow because yellow often needs a second coat. So I'm just gonna do a, a stripe from the top to the bottom of where I made my lines. And then the yellow will be off to the left and then I can kind of see from this line here to where my thumb is about that's gonna be three of my colors. So I need yellow, orange, and red to fit here. So you can kind of space them better than trying to start here and just kind of do your lines all the way across. So we have yellow here, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this all the way in because yellow usually, get it flowing a little better. I haven't used my uh, yellow in a little while. If you ever find that you feel like you're pushing really hard to get your paint to come out, just pulse it on your paper a little bit. Every once in a while, you'll get a little bead of paint that even comes out. And if that happens, I know you can see that over here. I just kind of dab right into it and make sure that I use that up. I don't like to waste paint, even paint, pen, paint. I don't, you want to use as much of it as you can. There we go. So we got our yellow on there. I'm actually going to skip over the orange and do red that way i don't accidentally pull up a bunch of yellow into my i mean yeah yellow into my orange so the red you come right up to where you made that pencil line we're going to make those darker obviously with black here in a bit but we're filling that red and then i'm going to skip just so the edges get a chance to just dry a bit before I go in between because I'm not going to blend my colors. I want these nice crisp and separated like a rainbow, um, more of a graphic style rainbow. I don't want an arch. You see how that ended up with an arch? I can't even see my pencil lines, but you want more of a jagged edge here. And we can play around with that a little bit more with our black when we go through with our black. And we might actually add some other places of color as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do our first outline in black. And then we can really start to see this shape emerge. So, like I said, you want sharp angles. If you think about like how a rock breaks, you don't end up with curves very often. So 
I'm gonna start on the red side because that purple's still a little bit wet. So you're just gonna come along here and create these lines. Now this is a fairly fresh Posca, so I'm gonna be very gentle with it. And I'm holding it slightly at a side angle so I don't splatter. And I'm just gonna work my way around this red and I'm using some, some of the lumps and bumps in the rock. So see how there's that little indent there that didn't get any red. So I'm actually gonna go up and around that. So I'm using my rock for, to take the lead as far as where these shapes are gonna be. And just go all the way around, kind of popping in and out in certain places. right here I really got to fix this it's too arched for my liking but there's a good divot here that I'm gonna work with there we go all right so we're back around to the beginning there so now the next thing that I like to do is add the natural places where I think it would like like web out the cracks. So where there's a point like this, a lot of times is a good place. So you just, again, use a very light touch and let the rock kind of force your direction with this and kind of let it kind of bump its way out to the side. And I tend to do a lot of Y shapes or backwards Ys um, to start. So anywhere where you see a point, you can kind of have a piece come off it doesn't always have to be a Y like that could be a single one there this one can kind of bump off in that direction but just let the rock the bumps in the rock kind of help you create these places where the rock is cracking like that All right, so we've got quite a few cracks going on here. So we're gonna leave it like that for right now. I am gonna come back with my colors and peek. So see, like my red, I've got a few little areas where I didn't quite get into the divots. When you do a second layer with paint pens, just make sure your first one's had time to dry. Um, and you wanna lay it on top of that. You don't wanna like scrape. So make sure your paint is flowing. I'm not going to do the whole second layer. I'm just going to get into some of these little divots. We're going to do some shading here, which is really just takes this to the next level. Well, let's see, I've got this one little divot here. It's actually right between the colors. So we're just going to fill in in a couple spots here. All right, so you can find areas where you want actual broken pieces of rock to be left behind. So you can create these little sections, not a bunch of them, but just a few where it's actually still connected, like it broke, but it didn't fall off yet, like that. And I don't do a lot of these, maybe with just one or two around where it just feels like a good spot for it. Okay, and then you can kind of look around for places where you maybe your pen skipped up and you can fill those and you can also create almost little triangles into um, where this your cracks are coming off because they're it's breaking away a little bit. So you can play around with this a lot. I try not to get too crazy into the details. I want to keep this good for beginners, but as you um, work with these more, you can play and um, create more definition in these pieces and more depth if you want to. And now the last step we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of shading. So I've just got a small brush back here and some water and a kind of junky washcloth. Um, and I've shown this technique before. This is the easiest way to add a simple shading um, with pens. 
You can do the same style of thing with acrylic paint as well. Just, I would alternate kind of between brushes so you have a wet brush and a paint brush. So anytime I'm using the pen, use your paint brush with a little bit of black paint. And anytime I'm using my water brush for blending, have a separate brush that you're just using for water. So I go into my water to get my bristles wet and then I actually dab a good amount of it off onto my cloth. You can always add more water if you're not moving enough, but you, if it gets too wet, then you just end up having to go over it again and again. So I'm gonna start on the red because I feel, or along the top, I feel like you'll be able to see um, the shadow best on these brighter colors. So I'm just gonna come along here and just right along that same outline, I'm just gonna add a little bit of fresh uh, paint. And then I'm just gonna take this and kind of wiggle on there and you'll see it will pull just this little bit of a shadow down onto your design. And we're not looking for much. It's just a little bit to create that depth. And while it's wet, it's gonna look a little darker when it dries, it actually gets a little bit lighter. But see, just that little bit of depth. So just a little, I mean, we're talking very little bit of water. I'm actually really careful when you put your paintbrush into your water that you don't get water up into the metal part of your brush because then that can drip down. So I'm just dipping the very tip, tip, tips and then kind of dab, dab, dab a little bit on my washcloth. So we'll continue down the side here. So you're just kind of tracing over the top of where your outline was. And then see, I got a little bit too much water there. If it gets too much water, you can always come back with more paint. But if you get too much, it just gets really watery. And then you'll, you won't get quite the same fading effect. So if that happens, just move on. When it dries, you come back and add more if you feel like it needs it. Now in some of these corner areas, oops, sorry, I just hit my phone with my glasses. Some of these corner areas, you can make them a little even darker because it'd be kind of pinched if you think about it, a little bit deeper in there. And again, just play around with the shading. It's something new to you. It might take a little bit of practice to kind of get it down. But if it gets too dark, just add a little bit more water to it and just kind of wiggle it around. I've got too much water there. So you just alternate back and forth. I've done this plenty of times and I still have to work with it a little bit. So once you get all the way around your rock, you'll be able to kind of set it down, look back and see if there's anywhere you want to add more. You know, that this little area up here, I got a little wet and I said I'd come back. You could always build it up and pull it more into your stone, depending on how you want it to look. I hope you all are hanging in there, having a wonderful time, painting lots of rocks, um, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So thanks for everybody that was watching today and those watching the replay as well. We'll see you next week with another live rock painting tutorial. Um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.